time is now. Join Logos Laura Tri Ministries in prayer and intercession for our nation, the Caribbean, kingdoms, women, children, and our neighbors. Second Chronicles 7, 14 to 15. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto prayer that is made in this place the awakening is here the time is now Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him to whom they do come. It would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck, and he were thrown into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him, and if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day return to you, returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Here ended the reading of Luke chapter 17. Verses 1, 2, 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Logos my co-host. She is trending, blending, and revealing spiritual truths. Wake up in the morning with Logos starting this week every Wednesdays and Fridays, 5 a.m. live stream. Dream, dream, dream. You know what I mean. Stay one hour with Logos Laura to go live on Facebook, Instagram, and add for advertising for this forum and segmentation. How to wake up. Clementy is for me. Stay tuned for more. Logos is for all ages. Training at different stages. It's no Sunday school. It's a training school where kids are cool. Bye! Logos Laura New Merch Custom Collections T-shirts $100 T-shirts $40 What's up or call? It's 5344 for more info. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Logos Laura. Hi everyone and welcome to the Ministry of Clean. I am your host for this segment, Logos Laura Tri Ministries, a ministry where we pray and intercede for our nation, our children, kingdoms, or women. We thank you for tuning in faithfully. And to all our new subscribers, we want to tell you thank you for taking the time to tune in to Word News Update. 
from the throne of grace to the human race, Jesus speaks again. We thank God for the word of God, from the word of God. We thank God for the spoken word and the message of hope to all Elands. Amen. In my segment, sharing with you wonderful things. We thank God for wonderful things. But before we get into it, let us pray this evening the prayer of the saints. Bless the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, God, with a humble heart and we ask your forgiveness of every sin that we commit in this flesh, in this body, in our minds, in our thoughts, in, in ignorance, the things we don't know that we should know before we go. But Lord God, the things we also know that we need to let go of and stop saying that God will understand. Yes, he understands, but his word stands above the understanding of man. So Father, we thank you for bringing us up to the place of holiness and righteousness. Father, today we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and we orchestrate the things of God from that place, not from the lower place. Father, we thank you, God, for lifting the standard in our nation, for lifting the standard in our homes, in our finances, in our actions, and everything that we do, oh God. Father, we pray that every stronghold that is holding on to what is not theirs, we ask, oh God, Jesus, we ask, Father, we ask you, Jesus, we ask, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find, knock and you will open the door for us. So we thank God. Excuse me. Bless the Lord. Excuse me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord this evening. And Father, even as we come before you, we say anyone that is that has the cold, the flu, headache, sore throat, whatever it is this evening, God, we ask you to dismantle it. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to add your healing balm, your tea your herbs, whatever it is that God you use to cure our bodies. Father, we praise you and we say thank God for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. We get right into the segment today. My segment is shared by the Lord God Almighty, received from the throne of grace to the human race. Jesus is still speaking to man. Ever wonder why some men cry? The father has conversations with his children. The father speaks to his children. Day in and day out. The word of the Lord says, He that has air, let him hear. For the spirit of the Lord is saying. <clears throat> and the Lord asks these questions. And he starts by saying to Logos, my company host, ever wonder why some men cry? You ever wonder why some men cry? Maybe not, not interested. But men cry for many things and many reasons. And today we're going to look at a few reasons why men cry. Let me tell you why. Men cry when other men lie. And they only found out when trouble broke out. Logos. Why do men cry? Father, men cry for many reasons. To name a few, men cry when they have to give up their old ways of saying and doing things from everybody. They want to identify with other men's style. Let me tell you why men cry. Logos why do men cry? <clears throat> Father, men cry to look and sound the same. In the same way every day. I repeat that. Men like to look and sound the same way every day. Without change, who can tell the difference. <clears throat> Father, men cry when they have to make wise decisions. They think of how they would lose out on what they already have. Instead of gaining new knowledge, man rather keep old knowledge. Logos, my 
company host. Why do men cry? Rumors of war. They think only debt, those, and nothing more. So what this is saying that when there is announcement of wars and rumors of wars, all men think about is that doors and nothing more. Logos, why do men cry? Father, Abba Father. Men cry to see how human beings have no conscience when it comes to rum and drinking of eminent drinks for man to act out sin. Logos, what is sin? Sin is a sickness with it. Romans chapter 7. For more of the scripture reading and understanding the natural law and the spirit of Christ, for Christ to live in us is right. Logos, my company host. What is wickedness? Father, wickedness is when men raise the price of rice to control the market and manipulate it. For goodness sake, let us plant a garden and let us prepare for the return of the Son of God. Logos, why do men cry? Men cry on their wedding day when they find out the bridegroom is not coming to the stage to say that his vows, that means the bride, was stood up. Logos, why do men cry? Father, men cry when they did not visit the dentist for a while. Logos, why do men cry? Father, men cry when the baby is aborted and they regret it. Logos, my co-host, why do men cry? Father, men cry when they want went to the bank and the money is not sufficient to pay for the things they really need. Logos, why do men cry? Father, men cry when a government is announced and the people are not fond of the leader on the ship. Logos, why do marriages end in divorce? Father, marriages end in divorce when there is more than one boss. Yes, amen. Logos, my company host, why do men cry? Father, excuse me, men cry when they are so fed up of doing the same things and don't know how to stop. Father, men cry for many things that could be worked out with the wisdom and knowledge of God. So I encourage you to read the book of Proverbs. Why do men cry? Let me tell you why. Thank you, Father. Up next, we have Logos Robert bringing you word news from the throne of grace to the human race. Jesus speaks again. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Tonight, and tonight I'm going to share on the scripture that God has given to us to deliver to this nation. It is Luke chapter 17. A word that this nation need to hear what God has spoken. That man will turn from the evil and from the wickedness that they do not have to depart into the pathway of hell where Satan is taking control over the minds of people because of what? Of evil. Of evil. God has called us to walk away from evil and do not be 
a partaker of evil. And it goes on to say in Luke chapter 17, Then said he unto his disciple, It is impossible, but that offense will come. But woe unto him to whom they come. And we live in a time where offense will come. And if Jesus is talking that offense will come, but it's impossible that it do not come, but it will come. But woe unto that person through offense will come. He's not talking that offense will come to the children of the enemy or the children of the devil. He's talking that offense has come to the church or the children of God or those that are serving God or living for God. Those that set themselves to worship God. He's talking about offense that coming to them. So we have to ask ourselves this question tonight. Who is bringing the offense to the children of God? Who is causing the children of God to get angry? Who is causing the children of God to behave in a manner that they ought not to behave? Who is causing the children of who's causing the children of God to get vexed? Why Jesus is saying all of this here? Because he's reminding us and everyone that is listening. If you take yourself to be a stumbling block against the children of God, if you take your hands to come up against the chain of God, if you take your mouth to come up against the chain of God, he's speaking about you. So ask yourself today, am I fighting against the chain of God? Am I fighting against the will of God? Am I fighting against the righteous? Because... Once you are doing that, you will not go unpunished. You will not depart and think you're going to get it easy and make it the way you plan to go. God is telling us, listen to me, woe unto that individual to whom the offense comes. If you take yourself to let Satan to use you, to let evil to manifest through you, to cause the children of God to be unhappy or to be sad or even to feel in a way that they ought not to feel because why we ought not to let Satan use us to destroy our brothers and our sisters at no time. So God, Jesus said, offense will come. It is impossible that offense will not come. But who will volunteer to work with Satan to make these offenses come? In this nation and we have to ask ourselves as we stand presently now are we doing anything that offenses passing through us are we doing anything to be a stumbling block to someone are we using our mouth or using our voice or using our thoughts or our mind to be a stumbling block to our brother and our sister or to our leader where we are interfering with evil and with darkness to stop the progress of righteousness or where we are saying listen to me this person will not make it i'm going to make sure that they ain't make it i'm going to speak evil against them i'm going to take part in darkness that this person do not make it the night is for you the night is for you if you think you're going to be a stumbling block the Lord already said, do not, do not be the one to whom offense will come because it is very crucial and it is very destroying for that individual. Just like what happened to Judas. When you allow yourself and the life that God has given to you for let Satan to walk through you to stop the progress of God, to any individual that is doing it the consequence is very great it is very great the Lord said it were better for him that a milestone were hung about his neck and that he be cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones does anyone in your life presently know in your life or anyone that you know that's very small or very young in the work of God or now starting up the will and the purpose of God. 
or no desire to serve Almighty God. There's anyone that you know that you are set in your heart that you're going to do evil towards this one. It is better that you do not continue to live in this nation. It is better that you say, so listen to me, life is over for me, that you repent. It is better for you to say, God, have mercy upon me right now. It is better for you to say, listen to me, Father, I know I can't make it with these demonic forces inside of me. It is better. God is saying, better for you to put a milestone around your neck and jump over into the sea. That for you should use your life, your time, your precious life that God gives to you to be an hindrance to someone that is now serving God. You know where you're now serving God? People said, oh, you will make it. You won't make it. The Christianity life is very hard. You won't make it. You're a up in sin. I'm going to stand up here and see you fall. I'm going to stand up here and see you backslide again. I'm going to stand up here and see that you can't make it. God is saying, listen to me. It is better for you to take a milestone, put around your neck, and jump overboard. And God is not disappointed with that. So we have to think and rethink. We have to check our thoughts and our mind and see what is it that is inside of us that is growing. What evil we have inside of us. We have to always back up and check. Look for evil inside of you. First, look for thoughts that ought not to be there. Look for see where Satan is hiding inside of you. Look consciously. Something just pull back and give your old self a check. Not going to the doctor for take a checkup. Check your life to make sure that demon is not hiding where Satan is using you to stop the things of God or to speak evil or ill towards the work that is manifesting maybe in your own street, maybe in your own family, maybe in your own brothers and sisters, maybe in your leaders, maybe in your congregation, maybe in your relationship, maybe anywhere you are at this present moment. Where the work of God is going on in someone's life. But in return, you turn back and you curse. You turn back and you speak evil. You turn back and you say things that, listen to me, they will make it. I'm going to make sure that they will make it. And God continues to say, anyone, anyone in this nation and the nation around, that think of these things, it is better for you to put a milestone about your neck and jump over board if you offense these little ones. He said, take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he asks for forgiveness, forgive him. There's so much of things that is going on in this world. So much of things. So much of evil, yet still, man are being carried away, carried away with the vast majority of mud that is being crafted into something that we put a name towards, that take up the resident in the heart. That there's no room for righteousness and holiness to manifest. That being carried away by the world and the departure of the world and the riches and the glamour. That only seem excited for a period of time where men give up the righteousness of Almighty God. That is forever that will judge them from today and tomorrow and from departing from this world. Where sin grip the heart so much that it's hard to dare to forgive their brother and their sister for something that they have done, that they have done maybe willingly. And we said that, I cannot forgive that person. You didn't know what he's done to me. God, 
that could forgive you for the evil that you have done continually and continually and continue even to today and God is forgiving you and your own brother and sister that there's nothing under the sun that is new to no one Jesus Christ make it very clear even Solomon there's nothing new and you just come upon the face of this earth maybe 40 maybe 50 maybe 60 maybe 90 maybe 120 years and you can't forgive your own brother and your sister and you live with that evil inside of you all the days that God has given to you you hold on to that evil that you cannot move forward where Satan is sucking the life out of you every single day that you live on this earth and you are saying listen to me I cannot forgive that person since when you make yourself a God that you cannot forgive. Everything that is upon the face of this earth, man could forgive the brothers and the sisters for it because God is the one that created it. There's the spiritual world and there's the righteous world. And we have to remember that the righteousness of God stands out in the spiritual world and the righteousness of God is what exalts a nation but sin will take a nation down to the pits of hell you cannot be the one contributing to the kingdom of darkness you cannot be the one contributing to hell at no time you have to come to that place where you have to forgive and let God heal and let God deliver you from the state of darkness because why Satan want to grip us and hold us in one place that we carry this burden and then you have to ask yourself some question how heavy is unforgiveness how wide is unforgiveness what is the impact and the disease and the sickness and the judgment that unforgiveness bring when it comes forth. What is it? The way of unforgiveness. You have to ask yourself some question. If you want to take something with you. If you want to hold up your brother and your sister. In the bracket of unforgiveness. Ask yourself. Can you carry the burden of unforgiveness? You cannot. You cannot. But what we do. We hold on to it. And Jesus said, if your brother comes and listen to me, I am sorry. I am sorry. You have to forgive. If you don't have the power to forgive, ask somebody to use some of their own. And you join with them and say, listen to me, I'm going to forgive you. If you think that that person is not enough to give you an helping hand, look for someone else get two or three person and you go with them and ask for forgiveness because without forgiveness there is a judgment there is a judgment man always think that they are God man always have this idea that they could do God work more better than him you listen good to man man have this way in them that they are God even in this nation that we are living that we are living even in this nation man practice that without even a second thinking that they could run this world and this nation better than God so sometimes they echo it into the atmosphere and they make it known into the earth and they spread that evil into the earth and it enter into the ears of men and it germinate and it grow and it bring the nation into captivity for said you didn't know what he have done we cannot forgive him you didn't hear what he said we cannot forgive him since when since when you and God is so far that you could utter certain things in this nation we have a loose tongue many times since when 
anyone could utter certain things in this nation that the angel and the angel of God that the strongholds of God that stand in this nation of Trinidad and Tobago that is protecting this nation against disaster and all kind of thing that you could say certain things and the angels are not hearing. It is impossible, Jesus said, that offense will come. It's impossible. But don't be the one that the offense had to come through you. Guard yourself and your heart that evil do not have to proceed out of your mouth and your thoughts. Do not be carried away by the demonic forces that is taking place. Try and protect yourself in the arms of God that when judgment has been executed, you is not the one that is being executed on. And Jesus continued to teach the people them. Just like we are teaching us today, let your heart go free from unforgiveness. If someone come and ask, listen to me, forgive me, forgive me. We always have a thought in our head. If I forgive you, you will do it again. If I forgive you, you will say it again. If I forgive you, this will happen. You suddenly become a God in this nation. But God have good news to you. And he continues to say, And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, seven times in a day he trespassed, he went against what you said. He went against your authority. Seven times in one day, what Jesus says the answer. Some of us will say that um, I never allow me to do it two times or three times. I'm going to kill him or do something. How do you weigh the, the benefit of forgiveness? How do you measure unforgiveness? How, how do you put unforgiveness in a bracket or a scale? How do you go about doing unforgiveness? Is unforgiveness being measured by what someone do or someone say? Is unforgiveness is being measured by the individual because we choose sometimes if to forgive certain people. We choose sometimes if to forgive certain race or certain skin color. We choose what to do with unforgiveness. We have some of us have a mindset that only this amount of things I will forgive and that amount I won't forgive. The Lord said, listen to me. If your brother come to you seven times in one day and said, I repent of that which I have done, the Lord is saying, listen to me. And seven times in a day, Call again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And we ask ourselves, what then he have to do for us to forgive him? All the things that mentioned in the scripture have to go into bracket. All the things that God desires of us have to go into bracket. It is not saying if somebody destroy you, you have to forgive them. If the person destroy you, there's the judgment of God for that. But God said, listen to me, the person trespass. The person trespass. The person trespass. And you have to have that heart to forgive that person. If you don't have it, it will be mentioned in the Bible. And you are not the one that will be escaped or excused from the word of God. Because our oh God have no respect for people he's not a respecter of man god not going to make up take some clay make up man pour into man a spirit give unto man all the emotions and everything wisdom allow man to open his eyes and to go and till the earth and to give him glory and then he will turn back and the person said, God bow down or something, God will just obey. God don't respect man. God created man to serve him and to worship him in holiness. 
that when you wake up in the morning, that God gave to your job is to glorify God for see another day and to lift up your hands and glorify God. Do not be like a wild person that do not reverend God. Do not be like someone that will just turn your back upon God. Do not be someone that God has to be running after you. Turn from evil that evil will not spread. And hear the Lord said, let us do not die without repentance. Do not go to your grave. Do not get sick. You know some people, they don't want to forgive people, but they get sick. It eaten up the inside and they will not lose the person. They all on to that what I've done and said, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. That will eat up you so much that it will deteriorate your inside so much that it will take you to your grave before your time you have to repent you have to repent do not die without repenting for the wickedness that you have kept in your heart it's not a righteousness God is not talking about the righteousness he's talking about the wickedness of unforgiveness unforgiveness have no righteousness in it it is only darkness and the Lord so listen to me for the fathers who forsake the children and never correct the error some of us walk in this nation there's so much of evil that is going on in this nation where father just walk away from the children and this error that is being going on all the time of the way but keep attacking the children even they are begging them where can we hide from the word of God fathers who turn their back and walk away from the children you turn your back and you walk away from your children you are doing evil towards them even when they turn back and they are begging you you're still living in that error that error of deceitfulness that you don't even know how to come out that error of gap that is there and it is there until you get rid of it because why you're not hear what i'm saying no one will live on this face of this earth that God has created. No one. And think you're going to get away with the evil that you are doing. It's impossible. It's impossible. God is angry with the wicked every single day. When you do evil today, God is angry with you. When you do evil tomorrow, God is angry with you. When you do evil the next day, God is angry with you. The government, sometimes the law of the land, don't even have to deal with an evil person. God himself will deal with that individual. Do not come into the bracket just like all you are in a bracket where your children is pleading i'm talking to fathers where your children is when you forsake your children let me talk about that so you guys will understand when a man impregnate a woman the Lord release that child. It's the Lord who do that. The Lord release that child from his kingdom into this world. He release from his kingdom into this world. Right? 
and on the passageway of birth that is where satan stand with his demons the passageway of birth so you guys will notice when he standing, he interfere with the children sometimes. That is why the Lord make it very clear. When someone is coming into this world, pray, 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 pray. And the Lord said, do not have it in your mind with joy. You have it in, in your mind with joy when the Lord announces it that you're going to send someone into the world and you rejoice with God because the Lord tells you who he is sending. But he said pray when they come into the world because you don't know what is the outcome. So let me go back to the fathers. When you make kids or children and they come into the world, and God gave you to them and you turn your back upon them because something they have been said or something they do or something you didn't like and you turn your back on them and even when they take the opportunity to talk or to get back to you or to correct the mistake what you do you before you embrace you reject them and become an error. And that way you keep attacking your children even though they beg you. Man think they are so wise. They are so wise and intelligent with the foolishness that they do sometimes. The foolishness. Why use the word foolishness? Because the righteousness of God lead it unto wisdom. And we have to be in a place where we are in the wisdom of God. And God is saying, listen to me, even, I, even though I gave you these children and they are reaching out to you and they are trying to correct things and before you remove that error, there's an error you know, that caused people, it always be something they do you have to listen to father something they do or something they say or something the mother do or something the mother say and they just turn i want to ask you a question do you think you're going to escape like oh 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 you're you going to escape i just want to know how and if you escape what you escape from and where you are going like what you escape from and where you are going the way of the Lord is light and righteousness if you don't remain in light and righteousness you are in darkness no matter who you are you are in darkness no matter what city Satan you are still in darkness. And once you are in darkness, you are in ignorance all the time. No matter what subject or paper or documents you have in your head, you are still in darkness. And if you continue like that, you will remain in darkness until you depart. That's why God said, do not die without repentance. Do not leave this section because there are three sections. If you don't know. There are three. Do not leave the middle section. Without making it right for the next section. Don't prove. To God. That you are wiser than him. Don't cause that in your head. And God continued to say that even though the children beg, they still do not have that error that has been corrected. I'm talking about the siblings who offense their brothers and their sisters. They speak about who are offensive and they take glory for wickedness. 
You know, you have brothers and sisters. I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters. Where you take the glory and you turn it into is where your brother or your sister is doing something good in the family. And before you speak good of them, you turn back and you slander your brothers and your sisters so much with your tongue. Don't you know that God gave you that tongue in your mouth to praise and to glorify and to speak good things? Do you know that that same tongue that God gave to you is to declare words in the atmosphere that when it gone out, life will come to your words? Don't you know that tongue that you have is not for cursing and to speaking bitter and ill things towards your brothers and your sister because both of you are in the same lineage? Don't you know that? That you are not to speak evil of your brothers and sisters and going to all men and to witch doctors and to people to do necromancy and to practice evil over your brothers and your sister don't you know that you ought not to do that if you don't know you know tonight that you ought not to take your brothers and your sister and to lay them up before the altar of darkness because of what righteousness they are doing when you take the glory and you speak wickedness of it how can you escape the judgment of God until you repent so you don't have to die without repentance you don't have to depart without repentance you have to repent for the evil that you are doing that Satan will not be glorified in your life. And God is telling and God is preaching to this nation. Your brothers and your sisters is to be offered up to Almighty God. Not for Satan and for demons. So put that in your head. That I'm not going to take my brother and my sister to offer them up to the kingdom of darkness for a little money for a little food, for a house, a piece of land, for anything that you cannot carry. Not even your body. There's nothing you could carry. So why? Why practice so much of evil? Why? Why don't practice the righteousness of God that you could make it to the next place? Why think you are so smart and so intelligent why think you are so wise in your own counsel where do you get that knowledge from it is not the knowledge of God if it was it could take you but it is not do not take the glory and turn it into wickedness because of some evil and your skin with your mouth. You know, some people laugh. Laugh. You laugh so loud. And you laugh so wide when you have done the evil to your brother. You laugh. Do you know that even the air on your head are counted by God? Do you know that the sparrow and the birds and everything is counted by God do you know that nothing do not take place on the face of this earth and God do not know do you know that our God know everything do you think that our God also know how much time your skin and grin when you do evil do you think our God know every time when you think evil of your brother and your sister in this nation that we are living in do you think that God knows every time when wickedness crosses your mind? Do you think that? Do you think that our God knows that, listen to me, today you are not serving him and tomorrow you will not serve him? Do you think our God knows that? Do you think you know that? Do you know that? That the evil that you are doing, that you could give him comfort. Do you know that? Do you know that when the time comes to pay for the evil, that you could pay for it? Some of us think like that. 
can you pay for the evil that you are taking that you are using up can you pay for the wickedness that you are practicing over your brothers and your sisters can you pay for it what do you have to offer what do you have to offer for the wickedness that you are doing that you are taking your brothers and your sister and you are offering them up to satan can you pay for that can you pay for the life or can you pay for the health or can you pay for what god has given to them because you are burning you are becoming an offense to the little one you are coming an offense can you pay for that the lord said the best thing to do is take a milestone hang it around your neck and jump overboard you cannot pay for that so do not do not interfere with things that you cannot pay for do not do that and the lord continue to say even in the home and with siblings they do all these things the skin and they open the mouth so wide when they have done the brother evil they make a mockery that we get him who tell you that you get him you are speaking of your action for today what will happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day you will not go on discipline for this is the end of the wickedness from families who offend one another and never take correction for the chosen one to bring the correction. In some family, when there's one person trying to correct the family, they fight against that one and fight and fight and fight. Who's strength are you using up i like to ask questions when you fight against someone in your family that is bringing deliverance and healing and blessing and correction to you whose strength are you using up is not the same strength that god gave to you that you use up to fight against your brother is not the same strength you use up for god bless you with when you go turn back and be a blessing to your brother that bring the word of God into your home for correction, it's at the same time that you could use up to support your brothers and your sister that bring the word of God into you. But in return, you fight them, you skin your teeth, you grin, or they come with the word of correction to your heart because they are the, they are the one that been chosen to deliver the word of God to you, you turn pop and attack them with whose strength? With whose strength are you attacking them with? Is it your strength or the strength that God gives to you? When you go through and you think all of this, remember, don't forget, just remember, God could take it anytime. The Lord could take it anytime. Because God is telling you and correcting you before that do not leave this earth. Do not die without repenting. Because if you die without repenting, that's it. You have the chance to repent. You have the chance to forgive. You have the chance to turn back. And do not offer your brother and sister to the kingdom of darkness you have the chance to help them when they bring in words of correction words of wisdom and understanding that come from god you have the opportunity to make a difference with the individual so you do not have to be a family member that grinning and skinning because of wickedness you have the opportunity and lord continue to say speak about vexation How much of you are so happy and delighted and so light up when your family member receives something of honor 
always see something that stand out or receive a glorious time from the Lord when you congratulate or you praise your brother and your sister for receiving something that God gave to them and you said brother or sister or mom or dad I'm so happy for you when last you do that but you turn back with vexation vexation now is where the enemy prompt you and prompt you and prompt you and interfere with your emotion it's very hard and difficult the spirit is only get vexed when they see evil you do not get vexed for righteousness you do not get vexed for righteousness you rejoice over righteousness and the Lord said listen to me vexation and miscommunication and no communication and amusing lies for a while the action they speak out vengeance you know sometimes you could be in a family and you ask yourself what is it that you have done wrong what is it that you have done wrong because this anger this rage is just coming out from the family and you ask yourself what is it that you have done wrong and when you check it out you have not done nothing wrong but they take up that space and give it to the enemy so the enemy has to retaliate but god don't want that for us god wants us to repent and make it into the kingdom of light god wants us to repent and turn away from darkness god wants us to repent and don't be the children that will bring offenses so we don't have to be the one that is being corrected but god wants us to be the one that could correct people that they will not continue to go into the dark way and the lord's talking about this vexation of communication we ask ourselves sometimes there's no communication within our siblings within our parents within even our government and those that there's no communication so all that is portrayed is anger and bitterness and what happened the days are going the days are going and then we're going to just drop we have to fight against the principalities that we are seeing in front of us we have to pause and listen to me yeah. we have to remember that satan was cast down here to destroy man we have to all our brothers and our sister and fight against the kingdom of darkness that is what we have to do we have to all our brother and sister and fight against principalities we can't let satan destroy us for us to go with him we as a nation have to come together so listen to me we have to destroy the kingdom of darkness that satan would have reign over our generation and that is what god is telling us do not all things in your heart all the living god in your heart because our temple is the temple of the living god where god lives and dwell in us so we don't have to walk in darkness and god said listen to me vexation or not to be in us of miscommunication because why the enemy could put in a wall and cause us to do things that is wrong but the lord said who can think the worst once anyone is thinking the worst once that thought is inside of you you are under a course so you have to check yourself listen to me why i am thinking like this because why there's a course over me who put today the enemy my thinking is supposed to be pure and righteous why am i thinking so corrupted because why there's a course over my life satan want to put a course over each and every one that we could think the worst not only about god but also our brothers and sisters how can we think so much evil to destroy our own family because why 
the enemy want to put a curse over us. And this is what the Lord said, listen to me. Today, we are going to destroy every stronghold. Do not let Satan rule you. Do not let Satan mash up what you have. Do not Satan, do not let Satan come in. Resist the devil. Not only one time. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. And he's going to flee from you. Let us pray. Father, we pray for every father, for every mother, every brother, every sister. We break every curses tonight in Jesus' name. We break every demonic plans of the enemy in Jesus' name. We break the thoughts that may be in our minds, Father, against the tricks and the trickery of Satan. We break the conversation and the miscommunicating of the enemy that may be a God in our mouth. We break conversation that may speak of God into our ears that we confess through our mouth. We break the thoughts of darkness that will corrupt our lives. We break the spirit of unforgiveness and everything that may stand at a wall and a gate of God in our life. We break, oh God, the forces of enemy that cause us to walk in to the camp of darkness. We break, oh God, every act and every trick of the enemy that may try to produce seed from us. We break these covenants that we mentioned from our forefather and our grandparents that we are still doing in our generation that is not of you. We break, oh God, this conversation that we bring, oh God, covenant, Father, for the kingdom of darkness. That this is my word. I am Logos Robert, reporting for Logos Lord Tri Ministries. Thank you.